this video is going to be a basic intro to the classes of Diablo 2 and the expansion Lord of Destruction. Uh, all seven will be available to play in Diablo 2 Resurrected when it releases in a couple of months. We're going to cover a little bit of the flavor and backstory of each class and the three skill trees that are available to each class and then a couple different nuances that they each have. Um, I'll display their starting stats and attribute gain per level. Um, I'll go over the attributes and how those work in another video. Uh, just for the sake of time. The first class we're going to cover is the Paladin. And the Paladin is your uh, shield master, sword and board, magic hybrid class with holy magic that uh, does bonus damage to undead and it can be significant because there are a lot of undead enemies in the game. The Paladin's three skill trees are the defensive auras, offensive auras, and combat skills. The Knights of Westmarch who felled the armies of mighty Leoric are pure at heart and closely follow the teachings of Zacharum, the religion of the light. A battle-ready warrior for whom faith is a shield, the paladin fights for what he believes to be right. His steadfastness gives him powers to bestow blessings to his friends and wreak cruel justice on foes. There are those who call the paladin an overwrought zealot, but others recognize in him the strength and goodness of the light. A miscellaneous fact for the Paladin. You can kind of see it in this artwork from the, uh, the concept art. He was black in Diablo 2, although it, it wasn't very obvious in the sprites. Uh, but you can tell now in Diablo 2 Resurrected, they have made him uh, very noticeably black. But when the game first came out, it was not obvious, and a lot of people didn't realize that to begin with. Next up is the Amazon. The three skill trees for the Amazon are Javelin and Spear, Passive and Magic, and Bow and Crossbow. Uh, the Amazon is your roguelike evasive hit and run uh, character she has a lot of elemental infused aoe attacks uh, and she also has a very tanky summon to distract foes so that she can dispatch of them from range this powerful woman warrior belongs to nomadic bands who roam the plains near the South Sea. The wandering of these groups often brings them into conflict with other peoples, so the Amazon is accustomed to fighting to defend her own. This lifestyle has made her fiercely independent and able to weather severe hardship and travel. While her skill with the bow rivals that of the rogues, the Amazon is also adept in the use of spears and other throwing weapons as well as in hand-to-hand -hand combat. The Amazon is much sought after as a mercenary, in which type of service she will be loyal as long as her own ends are also served. Also, there is a little bit of controversy with the Amazon's portrait. She went from this to Willem Dafoe. Next, we have the Sorceress. She is the main spellcaster, elemental spellcaster in this game. Uh, her three skill trees are three elements, so there is cold, 
lightning, and fire spells. And the sorceress is a great starter character or magic find gear finding character because she has teleport uh, built in. You don't need to get an item with teleport. And she's very unreliant on gear. The only problem is in the later difficulties, there are a lot of elemental immune monsters. So typically the sorceress will have to spec into uh, two elements in order to deal with those monsters. But even then it's possible to run into a monster that's immune to both of those elements. The sorceress is a rebellious woman who has wrested the secrets of magic use from the male-dominated mage clans of the East. The sorceress is an expert in mystical creation ex nihilo. Though somewhat lacking in the skills of hand-to-hand -hand combat, she compensates for this weakness with fierce combative magic for both offense and defense. Solitary and reclusive, the sorceress acts based on motives and ethics inscrutable to most and sometimes seems capricious and even spiteful. In reality, she understands the struggle between order and chaos all too clearly, as well as her role as a warrior in this battle. As a side note to this saying, she is weak in hand-to-hand -hand combat. I have gotten totally crapped on by werebear sorceresses in PvP back in the day of Diablo 2 and it was totally unexpected and hilarious at the time. Next up we have my personal favorite, the Barbarian. Um, his three skill trees are War Cries, Combat Masteries, and Combat Skills. The Barbarian is the only class that can dual wield uh, regular weapons, and the Barbarian can also use two-handed swords in one hand. Uh, they just will have lower damage. So you could use a two-handed sword and a shield, or you could dual wield two-handed swords. This does not work with any other two-handed uh, types of weapons. In the Barbarian, a member of any of several tribes on the fringes of civilization, rebuffs the influence of those he sees as soft and weak. Ceaseless clan warfare and the constant struggle to survive in the hostile wilderness are evident in the Barbarian's sturdy and powerful frame. Though perhaps lacking the sophistication of his civilized contemporaries, the Barbarian has an acute awareness of his surroundings. Because of his shamanistic belief in the animal powers with whom he identifies, the Barbarian is sometimes associated with stories of lycanthropy. In fact, he believes that he can improve his superb battle tactics by calling upon the totemic animal spirits to infuse him with supernormal strengths and abilities. The final class available in the base game of Diablo 2 is the Necromancer. Uh, the Necromancer's three skill trees are Summoning, Poison and Bone skills, and Curses. Uh, the Necromancer, especially in the base game, is the main summoning class, and the only summoning class really in the base game. Um, he has a lot of very powerful debuffs, and he can build full caster and utilize the poison and bone skills. Um, as a summoner, the Necromancer can have over 50 units to control uh, if you build that way. The only issue with that, and hopefully they fixed it in D2 Resurrected, was that in multiplayer it would typically make the game unplayable and cause desync so that you would run into a black wall, a uh, black sort of screen, and you would start getting hit by stuff you couldn't see and then you would just die, or you would get disconnected and dropped from the game. So hopefully they fixed that. 
From the steamy recesses of the southern swamps comes a figure cloaked in mystery. The necromancer, as his name implies, is an unseemly form of sorcerer whose spells deal with the raising of the dead and the summoning and control of various creatures for his purposes. Though his goals are often aligned with those of the forces of light, some do not think that these ends can justify his foul means. Long hours of study and dark mausolea have made his skin pale and corpse-like, his figure skeletal. Most people shun him for his peculiar looks and ways, but none doubt the power of the necromancer, for it is the stuff of nightmares. Now we are to the two classes from the expansion. We'll start with the Druid, since we just talked about the Necromancer. The Druid is the other class who can be built as a summoner. And the Druid's three skill trees are Elemental, Shapeshifting, and Summoning. So the Druid's a hybrid class. You can build him really three ways. Uh, you can go a full caster build, you can make multiple different kinds of melee builds as he can uh, shapeshift into a werebear or a werewolf. And he also has summons. Uh, can summon a lot of wolves and bear and other nature creatures. The druids are a race of nomadic warrior poet kings driven from their homelands long ago by their barbarian brothers. The druid tribes live primarily in the northern forests, using mystic secrets passed down through the generations. They summon the elements of fire and wind to do their bidding, and command the creatures of the forest to aid them in battle. Shifting from their human forms into that of wild beasts gives them abilities far beyond those of other mortals. And the final class is the assassin and the assassin's three skill trees are martial arts shadow disciplines and traps um, the assassin is the other character that was available in the expansion and she can make very cheap effective builds with traps which are essentially elemental infused traps, uh, yeah, I guess traps that you throw down and then just shoots different spells at monsters. Um, you can also build her for melee, um, which her play style in melee is somewhat unique because it uses a combo system and she can dual wield claws. So she is the only other class that has a dual wield mechanic, but is only limited to claw weapons, which are unique to the assassin. The assassins are an ancient order originally founded by the Vizieri to hunt down and eliminate rogue mages within their own ranks, employing secret disciplines to combat and resist the magical abilities of their elusive quarry. The assassin's bag of tricks includes traps and other infernal devices, martial arts, and powerful mental abilities. Common people know nothing of the assassins, but they are widely feared and respected by all who employ the magic arts. And that's going to wrap it up for this video. Thanks.